About 19 minutes to go before the top of the hour, the shooting of a 14-year-old boy by a foreign national has sparked civil unrest in Soweto. Claims say that the youth are the primary instigators, inciting looting of foreign-owned shops in Soweto, which has spread violently to neighboring townships now. Police have been monitoring the situation closely. This incident uh, puts emphasis on important social issues affecting the youth, such as idleness, drugs and unemployment. Well, joining us now from our Cape Town studios, we have the Director of Alternative Development Centre, Brian Ashley, to shed a little bit of light with us. So, Brian, welcome to the programme. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. And uh, thank you. And then also in the Johannesburg studio, we are very, very happy to have the advocate Lawrence Mushwana. He, of course, is uh, from the South African Human Rights Commission. Advocate, thank you very much for being with us. Good morning. All right. Advocate, let's begin with you. Let's, let's get your, your reaction uh, from the, the South African Human Rights Commission. What we've witnessed over this last week, what do you have to say about it? Well, uh, we really regret why this thing is continuing as you know, we come from 2008 when it actually started and one had hoped that uh, it's gradually coming to an end. But uh, when it resurfaced again uh, last week, uh, it's something that uh, it's unacceptable, particularly the targeting of uh, foreign nationals. Yeah. And as you know, whoever is in this country is protected by the constitution, their rights as foreign nationals, they, are, they also have right to their dignity, protection of their property, but we see uh, nobody respect them. When you look at what's happening in Soweto, the, loot, the looting, uh, never mind that there is a case against a foreign national for shooting a young person, but that did not warrant uh, to, 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 uh, the, for them to target even those who were not involved in the shooting. Yeah, yeah. the reaction is yes. unacceptable, yes. to say the least. Yes. Um, let's, let's now go over to our, our Cape Town studios. Brian, there are a number of issues that are highlighted here. We, we're talking about poverty, we're talking about xenophobia. However, the influence that this has had on the youth is increasingly prominent. What makes the youth in communities like Soweto most vulnerable? Well, look, I think uh, we should start off by saying racism and xenophobia should never be excused or tolerated. In, given our history in South Africa, we should be the champions of anti-racism and fighting xenophobia across, in our country and across the world. But of course, like many other parts of the world where you have extreme inequality and unemployment, we see how um, racism and particularly xenophobia grows, this uh, process of scapegoating the other uh, as a rationale for why our situation is so terrible. And what we've had over the last period is a very dramatic increase in unemployment in our country and particularly amongst young people. So whilst we are one of the countries in the world with the highest unemployment rates, our youth unemployment is particularly high, with almost 70% of those under 35 uh, being, you know, making up the unemployed. Yeah. And um, of course, with this uh, question of unemployment goes several social problems. And we see this in the, in the rise of gangsterism, drug abuse, substance abuse, uh, domestic violence, and so on. So we really can talk about two viruses destroying our communities. On the one hand, you have the HIV AIDS virus, but on the other hand, you have the unemployment uh, virus, virus that breeds many of these social problems, not least xenophobia. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, I, I want to pick up the xenophobia issue, but I particularly want to speak to the advocate about this because um, before we even started this interview, uh, sitting here in my uh, Twitter inbox mm. is basically saying that the SAHRC maintains that the targeted approach of these tax on foreigners in Soweto have xenophobic undertones. As much as we talk about the other issues of youth, unemployment, mm. idleness, all of these things, which is a major issue and a ticking time bomb, to quote the words of uh, Winnie Madiki's element, Mm. Xenophobia is really still at the heart of it, according to you. Um, why? What's, what, what is the problem? It is difficult to really uh, pinpoint one specific event, but uh, 
During our hearings, as we move around the country, no, no meeting foreign nationals in South Africa, there, there are different uh, reasons. Uh, for instance, in some areas, we find that uh, the real cause is drugs, where you have drugs and uh, allegations that they are being supplied by non-South Africans. Yeah. But when the community revolt, they don't revolt against South Africans, they only target foreign nationals. When you look at businesses, for instance, you go into the township. We, we meet uh, in December, we had a meeting with uh, the, uh, the small business people and foreign nationals, and uh, we try to bring them together. But uh, th that continues. The undertaking will be that now from here we are going to work together. Mm. And uh, what is strange enough is that you never find somebody who says, no, I hate foreign nationals. Everyone that you meet will say, no, look, I have no problem with foreign national, but you, you will be surprised to see youngsters and no longer elderly people. And you ask yourself, where are the elderly people that we meet? Maybe we're not talking to the right people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we talk about, um, Brian, if I, if, I, if I might bring to you, we talk about xenophobia and we talk about unemployment almost as two separate entities perhaps behind this. But can you really separate them? Um, where so many accusations by South Africans is that foreigners are coming in and taking jobs away from them. So how, how, you know, how, how sensitive is that line between unemployment and xenophobia? Well, I think it's, it's uh, you know, mass unemployment and poverty is a sort of breeding ground for many uh, type of scapegoating perspectives. So xenophobia is one, but and in, in a situation where we've seen such extreme levels of inequality, young people today are extremely angry, and we see it not only expressed in terms of outbreaks of xenophobia, but we see it in all the you know, day-to-day -day social delivery protests. The, uh, there's a huge polarization and social tension in our society because of our failure to redistribute wealth and to overcome the legacies of apartheid. So if we don't do, deal with that xenophobia, uh, racism, uh, you know, where we kind of also use language, so we say, you know, Somebody speaks, is it Klasa, and we are Zulu, and then we start scapegoating them, etc. All of these things have, have become quite uh, present in our society at the moment. So we really have to deal with the root cause, which is mass unemployment, and that's you know, uh, located with in our inability to transform our economy to ensure, as I said earlier, a redistribution of wealth. And, the, and those are some of the things that we have to think about long term in terms of the solutions to the problem. Xenophobia, of course, has been going on for a while. It didn't start just in 2008. We had that mass upsurge in 2008, but we have had low levels of xenophobia for you know, a, a considerable while in South Africa. And young people and older people uh, in our townships, in our informal settlements, Obviously, in a situation where they don't have jobs, where they can't get a living wage and an income, etc., start to turn in on, on themselves, in on their communities, and they, you know, focus on the other. You know, in this case, uh, it's it's foreign nationals, particularly those in, you know, who are in the commercial yeah. uh, areas, who are traders, etc., and uh, they see opportunistic opportunity, you know. Uh, possibilities of uh, over, you know, getting some uh, goods and services that they wouldn't normally be able Indeed. to pay for. Indeed. So this is, I think, some of the context in which uh, we've seen this big rise in uh, at, uh, looting in, in, okay. in Soweto and, and spreading now to other parts of the Indeed. country. Indeed. All right, Brian, I'm going to ask you to just leave it there for a, for a minute. We're going to take a, a very quick ad break, Advocate, as well. We're just going to take yeah. a break and then we'll continue to uh, wrap up this conversation and find out some issues. If you'd like to write to us, please do. At Morning Live, SABC, I see a tweet. Let's take this into the ad break saying, um, this is from Sherry saying, my helper lives in Soweto and says, the next day people complained paying 12 Rand 50 for a loaf of bread as opposed to 5 Rand. I can see you agreeing the advocate. We'll pick this up after the break. Stay tuned.
Guinea is reopening an Ebola clinic in its remote southeast in an effort to prevent sick nationals seeking better treatment elsewhere. The new labor law also seeks to clamp down on violent strikes by holding a trade union liable for violence committed by its members during a strike. The new canal is set to boost annual revenues to about $13 billion by 2023. It's part of a larger project to expand port and shipping facilities around the canal. This is Vigigas's fourth victory on the PGA Tour. That's all the weather that I have for you for now. Stay tuned. For all your business news, catch news at 1 every day. Be informed. Technology is all around us and is improving lives across Africa, like how young Nigerians are connecting to the internet. There are doctors finding new ways to save lives in Cameroon, and the South African public transport system that is now getting Wi-Fi. We have gadgets, apps and loads more, some of which play a big role in Africa's growth. A huge part of this African growth is technological innovation. To find out a bit more about social media and technology news from here in Africa and abroad, join me as Pumele Lezondi every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. on SABC News. Datacom could miss a deadline for a crucial step towards turning on the Madupi power station. But the power utility says it will probably meet the December the 24th deadline. We're looking good. We've come through three days, obviously, of load shedding, which uh, has unfortunately been necessary, but it's be been useful to have built up our reserves for the coming week. Shares of private hospital group Netcare jumped up today and closed on a high after the company reported increased annual profits. The hospital group is also taking steps to aggressively reduce its dependence on ESCOM due to increasing power outages and rising costs. We'll be reducing our energy needs by some 35% over the next 10 years and our cumulative savings of our forecast electricity bill will be in the region of a billion rand. So we're doing something very constructive uh, about the challenges we're facing at the moment. That's Business News, weekdays at, at 6 p.m. on SABC News. Cultures of Africa, though similar in some ways, are colorful and diverse. We explore the rich culture, dance and dress of the Tanzanian people of the Mtwara region. The dance that they're performing is what you will find in the village. And it's not just a paid gig, it's something they do, they enjoy. Mtwara's late development has left it with a rich reservoir of empirical knowledge of a pure African life. For whatever the reasons are, it's one of the last areas of the country to develop, and thus traditional arts and traditional culture. That's Kaleidoscope, Sundays, 5.30 p.m. on SABC News. Right, getting back into our conversation and a tweet coming in here from Keith and I'm going uh, I'm going to ask the, the, the advocate to respond to something like this. Keith saying uh, South African youth um, are uh, lazy and have a sense of entitlement versus foreigners who are entrepreneurial and work hard to earn. Is this a sense that we feel amongst a lot of how people view some of our South African youth? Um, and perhaps it's also um, a part of our history, a, a sense of entitlement. Is this a, a fair comment or not on Keith's behalf? Well, yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense that you do find some individuals who have that sense of entitlement, even uh, on things that they themselves don't, don't, don't have. But the reality is that looking at the youth in South Africa, the high unemployment level, you know, makes them vulnerable. When there is a situation like this one, everybody wants to seize the opportunity because they find them, themselves idling in the street, doing nothing, and all of a sudden here is an opening. Criminals have come in and they opened up. Uh, they open uh, space for them and they, 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 they join. I mean, you can see when they get in there, I mean, you cannot see the sense of yeah. retaliation. They're yeah. just getting something that they need badly. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 not, it's not very fair, but 
you do experience it and you can draw that uh, conclusion that uh, there is also a sense of entitlement. Mm, in a way it is. Uh, Hossi writing in and saying social imbalance will always be a scapegoat for criminality and attacks. It's difficult to talk to a person with little to lose. Brian, is, is that the case of, of, of some of the looters out there? They've got little to lose anyway, so they might as well just in, get involved in this criminality. Just get, let's get your, finding, your, your final remarks here. No, I mean, I think, you know, when we're faced with problems of the social problems that we have in our country of unemployment and uh, inequality and poverty and so on, there are many different ways in which we can tackle these things. Criminality is not the natural process. People mm -hmm. have organized, people have joined movements, people join trade unions and take up uh, issues and, and, and protest and, all, you know, mobilize against these things. And that's what we should be encouraging. We should be understanding that unemployment is a national emergency, it should be declared that, and should be, all our policies should be centered around overcoming unemployment because today it's xenophobia, tomorrow it's, um, at, you know, burning down libraries. The next day, as you say, you know, who knows with a ticking time bomb, unless we deal with mass unemployment in this country yeah. and inequality, we're not going to see a solution to the problem. All right, Brian, let's leave it there. Advocate, thank you very, very much thank for you. joining thank us you. here on the program. Thank I know that was touching the surface of the conversation, but uh, hoping to shed a little bit of light on it. Uh, Brian Ashley from the uh, Alternative Information and Development Center, and of course, advocate Lawrence Moshwana, chairperson of the South African Human Rights thank Commission. Let's take a break.